Hey there, and a very warm welcome to Love Audio, uh, the YouTube channel. Very good to have you along tonight. My name is Paul Weber, and um, uh, it is really good to see you. So uh, make sure that you put your name in the, uh, the subject as well in the comments. And if you've got any questions on tonight's stream, then make sure you ask them in those comments as well. I had a mask on earlier. Here it is, just kind of keeping safe. I was out shopping earlier on, so I just thought I'd bring it into the studio with me so it's nice and safe in here. Also sporting the new... Uh, the new branding, of course, and you can catch that by uh, clicking on the link in the uh, the YouTube banner there at the top of the channel. Uh, anyway, so my name is Paul Weber. You, um, if you're new to the channel, please say hi. And if you don't know me, uh, I'm an audio producer. I'm also a voiceover artist and a radio presenter as well. So um, uh, tonight's stream is all about the live, um, the Presona Studio One Five. Now they've they've been producing a fantastic DAW digital audio workstation now for years and years but they've really kind of managed to perfect it over and over again and I'm pleased to say that I've upgraded to number five and we're here tonight to look at it for a first hand so we're going to open it up from scratch we're just going to have a look at the front page see how that behaves and see where things are stored and see what happens when you migrate from let's say 4.6 up to 5, because uh, there's some an anomalies that you need to know about. I'll tell you all about that in a few seconds' time. But in the meantime, let's get going, shall we? Okay, so hi to a few people first of all. Hello to Sammy, Studio Geek 32. Um... Uh, hi to Danny as well, Danny Davis in Wales. Uh, hi to you. Also hi to Rich Vibes in Exeter. Um, so look who else we got here tonight. Uh, yeah, so that's about it for the time being, which is cool. But people will join the stream if they're very interested in the new Studio One Five, which is the new upgrade, of course, to the software. Going to be talking about that in a second. Let's dive in, shall we? Let's take a look at it first of all. Um, this is what the front page looks like. So what you're looking at here is Studio One Professional. And this is the front page. As soon as you open it up and it does all its checks, it does a lot of whole, kind of goes through a lot of old checks as well to make sure that it's doing the right thing. And, um, and it brings in things like your MIDI controller, so the MIDI keyboard, which is behind here, covered in, covered in paperwork. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Can't see that because the mic's in the way, isn't it? There it is, there it is. So that's the MIDI keyboard over there. Um, and it also checks for things like Melodyne, uh, which comes built in, and you can subscribe to that kind of thing as well, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, and then once it's done that, you end up with this, this page here, which is the front page. Um, now, a couple of things have changed. So the top row here, you've got New Song, and it tells you underneath it, what you can do with that new song. You can record a mix with that new song. If you go over to the right that says new project and you can master and release your music from that particular section there. We're not going to delve into that because that's like a, a much higher level tutorial and, and way beyond my pay grade. <laughs> um, but we will take a look at it in due course as we uh, as we go through these kind of tutorials and, and uh, looking at the different software and things like that. Um, then you've got a new thing which has arrived for PreSonus Studio One and that's called New Show. Um, now what you can do with this is rehearse and perform using live instruments. So for the first time, you can take your Presona Studio One 5 out on the road with you, either via a high-quality laptop or even a PC, perhaps, uh, hooked up to the network, along with your Studio Live 32SC desk, if you have one, or 64, or whatever you happen to have. And you can use all of the parameters within Studio One for your live performance, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so that's a great feature. And then, of course, you've just got the usual one, which says open. So if you've got existing files, which I do have, as you can see down the left hand side here, there's a whole load of stuff that I've already produced. OK, it goes all the way down there. And also you can click on the open and then open existing file if you've got some saved on a different hard drive, perhaps that it's not recognizing straight away. All right. So we've got it configured to the Studio Live 32 SC. That's my sound card. And I can click on Configure Audio Device, and you'll see that there, Studio Live Series 3. And then you've got 48 volt is your sample uh, rate. I like to work at 48 uh, kilohertz, rather. Not 48 volts, 48 kilohertz, uh, rather than 44.1. 44.1 is CD quality. 48 uh, kilohertz is studio quality. Okay, just put those into context. 5112 is my device block samples. 
Input latency looking at 15 mega, uh, milliseconds, so 15 milliseconds delay. Output latency is 10.7 milliseconds, uh, which is actually quite high, but we can reduce that once we get into the software if we need to. Okay, so that's that particular section. And then you've got configure external devices. So my master key 25, 49 or 61 key is just here. That's the MIDI keyboard that's controlling all the notes and stuff if I have MIDI connected. And then the mixing desk itself is connected to the software via UCNet remote, which is cool. So it's just like an Ethernet cable and that links into the computer and it drives the whole kind of connection between the two things, which is amazing. Works really well. So let's dive in. Um, this is a project that I am currently working on and is not yet finished by any stretch of the imagination, but I wanted to, to show you where I'm at so far. And it's it's a commercial, okay? It's, um, and I've got several tracks here. I'm gonna just scroll down so you can see the tracks. Let me just close the browser a second and close the mixer. I don't need that on that side. Uh, mixer, by the way, when I do that, I can bring that in. I've just disconnected it, but that's the, that's the mixer uh, that comes with the software. I'm going to drag that back over that side. Oh, wrong one. <laughs> Hang on, stay there. And put that over that side instead. There we go. There we go. Okay, I can reduce that. Reduce that. And then expand that. Reduce that. There we go. Okay. So we should have everything up and running now. So let's disconnect that. That goes on the other side. And I can reduce that. Uh, he says calmly. Maybe it won't. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, so we're going to leave it there and we'll take it off the mix there. Uh, so what you've got here is a multi track and it's a 30 second radio commercial that I'm producing. Okay. Um, top track is the music. And then you've got one, two, three, four, five. No, because it's not even in the mix. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 tracks of sound effects. Why? I hear you ask. <laughs> um, let's have a look. Uh, Sammy says, why do you use Studio One, not the other DAW? What is the other DAW? I'm intrigued. Uh, let me know in your comments, Sammy, which one you mean. Um, I use Studio One five it's version five that's the latest one that's what we're looking at tonight uh, prior to that i was using 4.6 so what i've done is i've upgraded and you can cross grade if you've already got the professional version or even the studio and producer version of 4.6 you can cross grade to the new version version five all right um hi to tom who's in the house uh sammy says you're almost to 100 subscribers congrats yeah we're getting there it's 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 about 86, I think, last count. I haven't really checked online tonight, but um, I will take a look a little bit later on. Um, let's have a look here. So, yeah, Tom says, wave. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, Sammy says, I've been working in my studio all day doing some changes. Brilliant. Well, I hope you find this useful uh, tonight, Sammy. Thank you very much for joining the stream. Um, so let's get into this anyway. So what I say is I've got like a, a track at the beginning. Uh, so we'll look at cancel that. Yes, yeah, so I've got a track at the beginning, which is the music track, and then I've got 12 tracks of sound effects. Um, now my brief, <laughs> which I've got here, um, is to start off with, music has to be something that says Scottish Highlands, okay? I'll put my headphones on for this so I can hear what, uh, what you can hear as well, okay? So the music that I've selected, it's a... Uh, as you can might as might well have guessed, it's an epidemic sound uh, track that I've got. I've soloed that. I'm going to play it from the desk. Okay, so that's the music goes all the way along, and we've not yet finished mixing that by any stretch. So. Um, in fact, I've got an automatic. Let's go uh, show hide automation. Let's put that on. And you can see I've, I've done a, a kind of dip as well. So that kind of dips and enables the sound effects to come through. Okay. So the first sound effect in the stack is 
some thunder again. This is from Epidemic Sound. Have a listen. Sounded like last night here, actually, to be fair. Okay, uh, so that's that one. Uh, the next sound effect in the list is very simply some rain. <laughs> so play that. With some thunder in the background as well, which is pretty cool. And it chops out pretty quickly, and I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, the next sound effect I've got is um, forest. It's a creek in a forest. So if I move that along slightly, you'll be able to hear that. And again, it fades out fairly quickly because the sound effects are, are quite fast in succession on this particular project. Next one here is a, a stream. Not a live stream, but just a stream. Sorry if this is making you want to go for a wee, by the way. My apologies. <laughs> okay, so that's that one. And then further down, we've got to go back a little bit for this one. There's a whole uh, selection of sound effects here. I want to play you these if I can. So let me just... What I'm going to do is unsolo that, but I'm going to mute the music track so you can hear the, uh, the whole thing going on, okay? Um, so this is what happens in this particular section here on the screen. You can see uh, two... You can see like a, uh, like a shady kind of green one there, two yellow and two pink, and then darker kind of red, pink, and then a one on its own there. So let's have a listen to how those sound in sequence. <laughs> You're probably wondering what on earth is going on right there. Um, well, this particular brief is for a certain um, bottle of um, spring water. Let's just say that. And we'll call it spring water, okay? Um, and the only sound, the only voiceover on there is going to be a female voiceover, and she's recording that tonight for me. Uh, so I can drop that into the mix tomorrow. But uh, tonight I'm going to voice the, uh, the Scottish voiceover bit that, that needs to be at the end. OK, just so we can kind of piece things together and you'll, you'll get an idea of how it all sounds. So what I'm going to do is I'm um, going to put the voiceover. Let's have a look here. Where do we put the mic? We can put it on any channel we like, to be perfectly honest with you, but I want it to be in sequence. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to insert a track, an audio track, just so I can record the... Um, uh, the in fact I can do it on this track here can't I watch this so if we go to here roughly and then we can go to um, let's un unsolo that but we'll solo this because we're going to record on it and then we're going to go to not input one and two but we're going to go to desk mic which is there and you can see that moving up and down there in the in the column and I'm going to record the uh, the voiceover so a little quiet please in the background and I'm going to put my best Scottish voice on okay here we go Highland Spring, pure filtered by nature. Again. Highland Spring, pure filtered. Filtered? Start again. Highland Spring, pure filtered by nature. More Scottishy, hang on. Highland Spring, pure filtered by nature. Aye. So I'm probably going to take that last one. And it, it's really poor, I know, and the, the female vo vocalist or the voiceover will make a much better job than I did. But there it is. Uh, so that's our edited audio piece there. I'm just going to chop the end of it off because we don't need the rest of it. Let's uh, play that. Pure filtered by nature. Okay. And we're going to chop that off right there. Put that there. And then bring that into the end of the production just before the music ends. Okay. So if we take that off there and just solo those two pieces off, you'll hear this. Highland Spring, pure filter by nature. All right, so what I'm going to do is put a compressor on the music track, but I want it side-chained by the vocalist, the vocal piece there. Okay, so if we go to the mixer and we go to the thunder track, which is where the vocal is kept, and we go to, let's have a look here. Let's just increase that. 
compressors on the music track there. So we go here and edit. And if we go to sidechain, you'll notice, <laughs> he says, come on. There we go. So you'll notice I've ticked all of the ones that I want to, I want it to be able to trigger the music to dip every time there's a sound effect come in because the, the, the music's quite loud on its own and I want it to be able to dip when the, um, when the sound effect comes in. Okay. And you'll notice that if I, let's have a look here, close that out a second and close that a sec, close the mixer for a second and then unsolo that you'll hear Highland Spring. Pure filter by nature. Could do with just a little bit of spring. Pure filter by nature. Highland spring. Pure filter by nature. And that's the end of the commercial. So um, the music track is a little loud where that peaks at the end. So what I'm going to do is go to the right section here on the uh, on the audio. So look and then go to right and then we go we bring in the mixer again just get, literally just that last bit so highland spring pure filter by nature like that okay there we go so that should no because i forgot to sorry my fault let's go back a little bit okay Highland Spring, pure filter by nature. Press stop. What you must do once you've uh, once you've done some automation on the track is make sure you take it out of rights because otherwise, what it does is when you play it back again, it will just give you a continuous line uh, quite high up. It won't reduce the the volume of the music for you. So you must change that to read instead. Okay. So now, if we listen to the whole thing. Island Spring, pure filter by nature. Okay, so the client wants something to reflect uh, the uh, the the way that the the drop of water from the rain cloud and everything else uh, filters itself through the forest into the ground, under the ground, into an underground stream, which is running quite fast, and then it it eventually resurfaces again into a woodland, and then fades out into silence before the sound of a single drop falls into the bottle and then somebody screws the plastic lid back on the bottle and then you have the voiceover come in. It's quite a complex project, but um, I just wanted to show you that because obviously I'm using the software for the first time. This is kind of bringing in things that, that could quite easily be a sound project, a music project, for instance, so you'd have different instruments and vocals here. Um, but I wanted to show you the kind of commercial production side of it from my point of view, of course, because that's what I do. Um, and what I'm also hoping to do tonight, once I've answered a few questions that may come up in the stream in a second, is to put an automation on the bit that goes from the underground stream. I want it to kind of go, I want a filter to go like you're, like you're underwater, if you will, and then back up again, okay? So we're going to add an automation track in there with a filter, and then we're going to automate the filter to go down and then back up again. Um, just to create that effect so that a whole thing including the music will go down as if it as if you're kind of muffled and you've got um like a a face mask on and you're doing snorkeling that kind of thing uh, so it, it'll feel like you're dipping yourself underwater which would be quite cool uh before i jump into that let's uh, let's take a look at um some more comments uh nj please can you say hello to anyone who knows me uh nj's from um swindon Hello, NJ. How are you doing? Hope Swindon's okay uh, and is treating you well. I think your mic is overloaded a little. Yes, it is, because I've just turned it up, Sammy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. Thank you very much. I'll talk quietly. Um, my accent is so great. Ah, what the Scottish one? Oh, you have no idea, buddy. Absolutely no idea. I just end up sounding like Sean Connery from James Bond, but um, let's not go down that route, shall we? Uh, let's have a look here. Um... 
Yeah, your accent is so great. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So um, if you've got any questions, by the way, about Studio One, the new five software or any other editing software, please do drop those into the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. OK, <laughs> uh, this is um, Sammy says, do you ever use a patch bay with your studio setup? No, I don't. To be fair, um, I don't have one. Um, yeah, Rich Vibe says, are you thinking almost like an HPF cutout? Yeah, uh, that's absolutely right, Rich. That's the, that's the kind of thing that I'm trying to um, uh, trying to automate on there. So any any help would be wonderfully appreciated. Guy Cool says, hi, Paul. Would you be able to answer a vMix question? Uh, yeah, no problem at all. It's, it's open house tonight. Um, so uh, just jump on and ask the question. I'll see what I can do. Um, Rich Vibes says, after last week's show, I've decided later this week I'll be purchasing the Behringer compressor that we talked about. That's really cool. <laughs> um, I should be uh, an influencer, shouldn't I? But uh, I, honestly, I don't get any money from Behringer for, for telling you to go and get that. It's just a suggestion. And um, and they are re reasonably priced as well. So I'm, I'm glad that you managed to find that, Rich. Thank you. Um, Tom says, Pro EQ on the master channel and automate a low pass. Yeah, you say that like it's easy. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so I'll, um, I'll try that. Yeah, for sure. Let's have a look here. I'm going to just reduce that a second and bring back in VMix. I can see what's going on. Uh, let me go to main camera a second. Uh, so where were we? So Guy Cool says, um, yeah, how to set an overlay for comment to automatically last for 10 seconds in VMix. What like this you mean? And it goes away. Um, the way to do that it's very simple. So what you need to do is set it up on one of your, um, in fact, let me go to, uh, let me bring this over here a second, because then you can see my vMix. I'll go to desktop. Uh, so this is my vMix setup. So we're looking at, um, I'll go some stingers. Desktop. Oh, by the way, uh, t-shirts. And if I go here and here and do that, Love Audio Merch, modelled by Callie. Now, if you don't know who Callie is, a lot of the, the people in the stream right now will know who Callie is. Callie is now working for Live Streaming Pros in America. And uh, she very kindly purchased one of my T-shirts from the merchandise store. So uh, thank you very much indeed, Callie, for that. And uh, as you can see, um, Guy, I've got an overlay coming in on there. But that's I'm doing that manually by pressing number two on the input itself. And I'll show you that in desktop, two secs. So here we go. Just down here on the left-hand side, you'll see the input says 26, Merch Title Cali. And what I've got is triggered it on a number two there, which is fine. That's separate from my number two here, or is it? Hang on. <laughs> uh, number two on my normal thing is my name that comes in like that, okay? That's my normal number two preset. Um, back to the desktop again, and I'll show you how we do the um, uh, the socials. Okay, I've called it new social. So go into the preset, load it up into your um, preview window. And what you can do is go into the setting itself, which is in the cog icon at the right hand corner of the preset itself, or the input rather. And we go so all of those positions are fine multi view there's nothing else in there so that's fine triggers I haven't got any triggers on it at all general so we close that out we go down to the overlay section at the right hand side of vmix down the bottom here okay so click that and you'll see number one full screen slide 400 milliseconds duration 7000 milliseconds duration so how long it stays on the screen for okay so my first um, preset is the social. So bring that in. It lasts for seven seconds. And then it flies back out again, okay? Now, if I wanted it for 10 seconds, I do that in here. So in the duration section, in that box there, just change that to another one zero, and then click OK. Duration is not a number or is invalid. Okay, don't know why then. 
All right, well, let's let's fool it and let's make it nine seconds then, or nine nine point five, so nine thousand five hundred milliseconds. <laughs> Just to fool it. All right, watch. There you go. Okay, so now when I press social, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and a half. It goes away again. So that's how you control how long these come into the screen for. Okay, let's go back to the main camera. Um, let's put a different message up there. I hope that helps, Guy. Uh, let's have a look here. David did a tutorial and it worked well uh, on triggers in vMix. Yeah, absolutely. So you can do triggers in vMix. Um, Sammy says, very excited for tomorrow. Yeah, we're doing a deep dive um, and and uh, an implication. And what's it called? <laughs> um, what's it called? I really don't know what it's called. But anyway, it's it's part of the training that we get with uh, with live streaming pros. And he says it's um it's very exciting. Um, Tom says, worth a try. Yeah, that's um it's a good thing. I I might need you on the phone for that. Are you available tomorrow? Because <laughs> I need to do this commercial ready for. Uh, a thing that's happening on Thursday. I say no more than that. But I've got to present this commercial to certain people um, that are sending me the details in order to do that. Um, what else here? Triggers in vMix. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, Sammy says, I see a picture of Callie. Yeah, like I say, she um, she very kindly purchased one of my uh, T-shirts from the uh, merch site on Teespring which is here, by the way, if you've not seen that before. And then I kind of did a montage and put her into the in the whole mix as well. And then pop that up, <laughs> which is pretty cool. All right, well, uh, um, I'm going to try and investigate those settings uh, in the software that I've been messing around with all night, which is the PreSonus Studio, uh, Studio One 5. So up to version five now, which is cool. And, um, you know, certainly hope you enjoyed, you know, kind of what we were doing, putting together that, uh, that commercial with the music and everything else. As I say, I'm going to try and experiment with, um, uh, with those settings. Let's take away the mix for a second. Uh, like that. See what I mean? If, if you don't change the setting from right to read, it just puts a continuous straight line. <laughs> in that um, in that channel, do you see that? Highland Spring, pure filter by nature. And if you weren't here earlier, I just had to mention that I've done the male voiceover, but it's not supposed to be me. There is a female voiceover artist who is Scottish, genuinely Scottish, who's going to be doing that end bit for me tomorrow. So um, uh, I'll play you the finished article next next week how's that is that like a is that a good thing is that a promise <laughs> um let's have a look here nj says how much is it that's a very good question shall we take a look on the uh let's take a look on the screen um oops let's have a look here so if we go to a browser window two seconds you've got my desktop there haven't you it's cool do that uh let's right click new tab and then move tab to new window drag that over here like so and if we type in uh there we go so presonus studio one five we go i don't want to log into my particular system but uh, uh we'll do that from the presonus shop you can go to shop.presonus.com forward slash studio one five professional all hyphenated. And here's the software itself. So it's 344.40 if you buy it as a standalone product. Okay. Now what they've done is they've launched a thing called Presonus Sphere. And it's like a subscription. So you pay a little bit per month and you get the software, but then you get updates with it as well. Okay. So it's a different way of, of purchasing it. It's a digital download. Um, but what you can get as well, if you um, cross grade from PreSonus Studio One 4.6, uh, either professional version or 
um, the producer version, I think it is, or the artist version, you can migrate that across at a lower fee. And that's exactly what I did. Okay. Um, and it gives you various things on there. But uh, yeah, that gives you the, the UK price anyway. So 344.40. Um, that includes taxes as well. And because there's no there's no postage, it's a digital download. <clears throat> Excuse me, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, let's have a look here. Uh, ah, so Tom has said... Uh, don't start work till 6 tomorrow. I'll video call you and show you how I do it in FL Studio. Pretty much looks the same. Yeah, and I think that's probably the best way to do it. it it's kind of... It's one of those things that... Um, is available in any digital audio workstation. It's just that I'm not competent enough to uh, uh, to do it, clearly. But if you are, and you're willing to teach me, then um, we can do a tutorial on it, which is pretty cool. Uh, Rich, thank you very much for your comment. Uh, let's have a look here. Tomorrow is Taco Tuesday, says Sammy. <laughs> yeah, um, every... Um, Every Tuesday to Friday, live streaming pros go live on YouTube and on Facebook as well. But on, on Tuesdays particularly, it's kind of questions and answers and that kind of thing. And they call it Taco Tuesday. Goodness knows why. And I always put a pizza logo up there. They hate that because I'm not into tacos as much as I am pizza, which is pretty cool. Um, I think we're pretty much at the end of today's stream. I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, don't forget to give us a like and a thumbs up, won't you? Um, and if you've not subscribed yet, make sure you do that. Just click the subscribe button and next to that you'll find a bell icon. And if you click the bell icon, that'll remind you when I'm going live next. And it's normally every Monday night at 8 p.m. UK time. OK, so I want to say thank you very much indeed for watching today's stream. Um, and if you have any questions, drop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them before next time. Uh, but in the meantime, stay safe, look after each other and I'll see you next week.